as we prepare for benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. and reposition. Quantum ergo sacramentum venere mucenui et onticum documentum No voce dat ritui, res et fide supplementum, sensum defectui. Genitori genitoque, laus et jubilatio, salus honor vietrus quoque, sit et benedictio, procedenti abutroque, compart sit laudatio. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our words of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us in the peace of the kingdom, where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be his most, blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar, blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, blessed be the great mother of God, Mary, most holy, blessed be her holy and immaculate conception, blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Parish. As we celebrate today the Feast of St. Peter Chrysologus. Our Mass this morning is being offered for Jim Zinser. Prior to this Mass, let us pray. Lord, show me one way in this Mass that I can become a better version of myself. Lord, as I listen to the readings, the text, and the homily in the quiet of my heart, What is one way that you are inviting me to be a saint? Give me the grace to respond. God is in his holy place, God who unites those who dwell in his house. He himself gives might and strength to his people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate today the feast of St. Peter Chrysologus. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, 
and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Peter Chrysologus, an outstanding preacher of your incarnate word, grant through his intercession we may continually ponder in our hearts the mysteries of our salvation and faithfully express them in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. This word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Rise up, be off to the potter's house. There I will give you my message. I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, working at the wheel. Whenever the object of clay which he was making turned out badly in his hand, he tried again, making of the clay another object of whatever sort he pleased. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do to you, house of Israel, as this potter has done? Says the Lord, indeed, like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, house of Israel. The word of the Lord. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Put not your trust in princes, in the sons of men, in whom there is no salvation. When his spirit departs, he returns to his earth. On that day, his plans perish. Blessed he, blessed he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, his God who made heaven and earth the sea, and all that is in them. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into a sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down and put what is good into buckets, but the bad they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. When Jesus finished these parables, he went away from there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We seem to be a little smaller in size tonight. I hope that's because everyone, there's lots of people planning on coming to Mass tonight and then going to adoration at 7 o'clock. Uh, as a reminder, we do have uh, adoration this evening um, out at the pavilion. So please uh, join us for that this evening. So we celebrate today the Feast of St. Peter uh, Chrysologus, and uh, 
we have two saints that have, uh, we normally say like St. Francis of Assisi, because St. Francis was from Assisi, or St. Anthony of Padua, or St. Rita of Cascia. But Peter Chrysologus, and then we have another uh, doctor of the church, uh, John Chrysostom. Uh, both Chrysologus and Chrysostom start with, uh, it's, it, they were actually Greek nicknames. So notice that it's not Peter of Chrysologus or John of Chrys, uh, Chrysostom. So uh, in Greek, uh, the, the, so sorry, Peter Chrysologus, the, the word Chrysologus uh, means golden mouth. And then, um, or golden, uh, yeah, I think it's golden mouth. And then uh, uh, Chrysostom means golden tongue. And uh, both of them had like these nicknames that they were given to them uh, because they were really, really good preachers. So I'd like to talk just a little bit this morning about preaching. And uh, I think it's awesome that these saints truly I know. Um, that's what I was like this morning during my holy hour. Um, that these saints, when it really truly comes down to it, that, that they're known, and they were known by their nickname of being really, really, really good preachers. There are 170 sermons that exist from St. Peter Chrysologus that he had written down. The reality is that every single one of us is here today because of someone's preaching. Whether it be preaching that we heard in person, now because of modern technology, preaching that you heard in person, preaching that you heard on the radio, the internet, on YouTube, preaching that you read in a written text. The reality is that the way that we come to faith, we have to hear the word proclaimed. We need to encounter the word of God. And that's why preaching is absolutely so vital and important. Now, we also know that preaching can take place through actions and through witness, and not, God does work in other ways. But that preaching is really, really, really vitally important to the church. I want to encourage you today to spend some time thinking about preachers that have had an impact in your life. Who are the preachers? Who have you heard preach that has had a tremendous impact in your life? When I was a young seminarian, I had no idea that I was starting a mass journal at the time. But when I was in seminary, I, would, I had a journal that I solely would put in quotes and ideas that I would hear in the preaching in the seminary. And any time that one of my priests on faculty would give a homily that I thought was intriguing or whatever, I would write down what the thought was. And then Oftentimes when I would go on my yearly retreat or was just looking for some inspiration, I would use that little uh, journal as a way to continue to use that preaching, the fruit of prayer that those priests had reflected upon. But because of that, I also have the names of those priests and what they said and how that homily touched my heart. And it's almost this beautiful litany of like, of great preachers that have helped to form me and to be with me on the journey that I had of coming to faith. We 
talk quite often um, when I'm with seminarians and priests where, of course, the church and the future of the church and the state of the church is very much so uh, always a topic. And one of the questions that I always like to kind of ask, and uh, we're in a very interesting time in the church because lay preaching is actually now in a certain sense uh, becoming more effective than clerical preaching in the church right now, if you actually look at the trajectories of what's happening in the church right now. The voice of Matt Frad and Scott Hahn, and um, I'm going blank right now, uh, but there are a lot more voices of Orthodox lay people than there are of really, really great bishops and priests. When we really ask, like, who is out there, like, transmitting the word of God to the people of God? If we ask the question, like, what clerics, meaning priests, right now, are really, like, vibrant and allowed in the church in America, it's going to be, I always say, it's going to get reduced down to, like, a small four. Father Larry Richards... Robert Barron, Mike Schmitz. Who's the other one that I always mention? Who's the other one that I always say? Oh, yeah, no, I don't mention that one. <laughs> he said Father James Martin. Um, but if we really look at, like, it's, it's really, it's really, really, very, we're, we're in a very interesting time. A very interesting time. And so I think it's, uh, I, I think Father Don Calloway is the one that I, I, that I often, often will mention. But I really think that it's, it's important for us to, to, to never underestimate the importance of preaching and to always be grateful for it when we have it. So I want to encourage you to spend some time think, thinking about priests or even lay people who have preached the gospel to you effectively. I want to encourage you, um, if that person is not me, because I might have inspired you at some point in your life, but uh, I don't want you to do what I'm going to ask now. I want to encourage you today to just send an email, send a message, because preachers need encouragement. I don't need any of this. My head is way too big as it is. So, but I think that it's really, really important that you encourage preachers. I was thinking this morning as well, like St. Peter Chrysologus has 170 sermons. That's it. He was also from the 300s and the 400s, but. Like, you think of where we're at technology-wise, particularly now with, like, COVID-19. Like, we, here at All Saints, we've been putting our sermons online for years now. But like, how different that is as well, but also, like, because of technology, how great that is. Like, how many sermons are being heard now by good, faithful priests that would have never been able to be heard before? because of technology and what a blessing that really is. So let's pray for that grace today just to, to, to have gratitude in our hearts for the priests and for the lay people for great preaching that has been anointed, that has touched us, that has formed us, that has been golden. And let's pray that we may respond to that preaching in our hearts, in our actions, and in our lives. Let us stand. Let's offer our prayers and our petitions for the church throughout the world that effective preaching, preaching may continue to convert minds and hearts, we pray to the Lord. For all those who struggle financially that God will provide for them, we pray to the Lord. For the conversion of all politicians, we pray to the Lord. For peace on our earth, we pray to the Lord. For blessings upon all doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals, we pray to the Lord. 
for an end to abortion and all crimes against life, we pray to the Lord. For a radical increase in holy vocations to the priests and religious life, we pray to the Lord. And for all those who have died, we pray to the Lord. The Novena for St. John Vianney. St. Jean-Marie Baptiste Vianney, you are so adamant against sin and yet so sympathetic and so ready to welcome the sinner. We come to you today as if you were still alive and as if we were kneeling at your feet and you could hear us. Bend towards us. Listen to the repentant. Listen to the repentant confidence for the weakness and miserable deeds that we have done. Priest of the Lord, inexhaustible confessor, obtain for us the horror of sin. You wanted us first to avoid the occasion of sin. We want to take your advice and make the resolution to break bad habits and to avoid the dangerous occasion of sin. Help us today to examine our consciences. Holy priest of ours, we have confidence in your intercession. Pray for us during this novena for these particular intentions. O oh God, you raised up humble St. John Vianney to show what one priest could do. Pour out your graces upon my parish and upon all priests that they follow his example. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work from your hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work from your hands, and become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of St. Peter Chrysologus be pleasing to you, O Lord. For taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as in the festival of St. Peter Chrysologus, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end. We acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, the pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, gracious to make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, Chrysologus, and with all the saints, in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Behold the faithful and prudent steward, who give them their allowance of food at the proper time. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already come, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of blessed St. Peter Chrysologus, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity through Christ our Lord. O salutaris hostia, que celi pandis hostium, Bella premunt hostilia, da robefe auxilium, unitrino que domino, sit sempiter na gloria, qui vitam sine termino, nobis donat in patria. Amen. Most Holy Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly and offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, present here in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifferences with which he himself is offended, and through the infinite merits of the most sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg of you the conversion of poor sinners. Amen. Amen. 